Okay everybody, welcome to today's tutorial on first principles. Um, today what we're going to be going through is what first principles are and exactly why we use them, okay, or why we uh, bother with them. Actually, I'll never know the reason why we bother with them because there is such thing as second principles, so that's just a methods thing, okay? You have to get used to it. Um, so we have to still do it, okay? Now, we kind of have to briefly look through the average um, rate of change and an instantaneous rate of change to understand this. So let's just say we have a parabola, um, and I'll draw two of them, because I want to show you two different cases. So it's the same parabola formula and everything. Let's just say in this parabola here, we're going to choose, um, we're going to choose a value, a value of this, so this x value, and a value of that, and we're going to connect those two together with a line. So if I connect the two with a line, that's meant to be a straight line, okay? It's a bit wonky, but it'll do. Alright, so um, as you can see, the straight line, there's a little bit of a gap in between the straight line and the graph, right? So um, if I want to figure out um, the gradient at this given point, at this specific point only, okay, that blue line is not going to be a correct way of approximating the gradient at that given point. So what we need to do is if we take that same point from here, okay, and put it onto this axis, what we need to do to that point that we've chosen here is we need to um, sort of make it closer and closer and closer to that given point. So if we say place it here, okay, then basically when you connect your line with these two points, okay, uh, then you're going to get a better approximation of the actual gradient at that original point that you were trying to find. Okay, so the closer those two values are, the more um, accurate will your tangent be. Okay, so essentially what we can do is we can define these points. We can say that this one here, that this, val this point here is x, and that this value, like this next point here, can be x um, plus a value of h, where well, you don't know what that value of h is. But all you know from this example, from situation number two, is that this x value and the next coordinate that you choose should be closest together in order to make the best and most accurate tangent possible. Okay, so using that, what we can say, I'm just going to look, I'm just going to um, redraw this, okay? So just keep that in mind that we want the points to be really close together. I'm going to draw a bigger graph. Okay, I'm going to place my x here, and I'm going to place my, so here goes my x, and there goes my x plus h. Alright, and what I want to do here is I want to figure out the rate of change, right? I want to figure out what the gradient is at that given point, okay? So the closer this dot is to that point, the better my tangent will be. So keep that in mind, and let's have a look. We need to get the y value, because remember to get the gradient of anything, to get a gradient you need to do rise divided by run. Or, in this case, you need to use y2 take away y1 divided by x2 take away x1. Okay, so once you um, have those values, then you can figure it out and, play, and find out your gradient. So let's have a look. We know what x is for the first point, but we don't know the y value. So let's just assume that this equation is fx. Okay, so that's the equation. Um, and what we're going to do is um, into, we're going to sub x value into fx. So using x, when we put it into y, we get fx. Okay, so that's our formula, that's our y value. If we then do the same for x plus h, we're going to end up having a, fun, a y value of f, f x plus h like this. Okay, so that's the x value and that's the y value. You can write this as a coordinate if you wish. Okay, hopefully that doesn't confuse you. It is a coordinate here and that can also be a coordinate there. Okay, so let us substitute these into this equation here 
And what we're going to find in that case is that we, um, we can basically put in fx, we can make this y2, we can make that y1, we can make this y1, and we can make this y1. Sorry, x1 and x2. Okay, I need my coffee. Alright, so let's, let's use this formula and place those values in. So hopefully this isn't getting too messy for you, but at, the gradient is going to be equal to fx plus h, take away fx, which is y1, um, divided by x2, which is this stuff here, minus x1, which is minus x. Okay, so so far we have um, plugged in all our values, and we have something looking really messy like this, okay? It, it looks quite horrific. This bottom thing, you can, um, you can cancel out the x values, and you can just leave h here. Okay, so now we have this kind of expression. And as you can remember from what we discussed about before, these values should be the closest possible. Closest possible. So if they are the closest possible, then what you basically need to make sure is that this, h, this value of h that you have added onto your x is as small as possible. So we define that by using a limit. We go the limit of h, okay? h should be approaching a value of zero. You want h to be as close as this x, as small as possible, so that these two x values are very, very close together. So this is where that comes from. The, the h value has to be approaching zero, and then we just basically substitute all the rest of this stuff in. So now, you can see that you have something known as, um, so this is all the gradient, okay? So this is where the first principle comes from, okay? It's, it's not really important for you to understand that proof if you haven't, but it is important for you to understand the questions and how to tackle them. So um, I, I hope you guys get an appreciation of understanding where all these concepts come from and how they tie in. Because methods is an analysis kind of based maths where you really should understand basically where the formulas are coming from. And you should be satisfied with the fact that you can prove to yourself that these things work. Okay, so this is known as the first principle equation. And in the next tutorial, we'll be going through examples of how to use that. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed today's session and I'll see you later.